Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Inspector Waffles. Now this was developed by Goloso Games, I hope I said that right, published by Red Art Games, I hope I said that right, and it's usually available for £10.74 slash $12.99 in the US dollar dollar, but of course always check out the sales in case it decides to pop down there for 5 so we play as Catman, Mr. Inspector, Police Chief Detective Wiggum. I mean Waffles. And the gist of it is, uh, he basically got some P PTSD from stuff that happened long ago until a big CEO, Catbro, gets moided. So he has to push through everything and solve this case. It's a great story, lots of puns about cats and dogs, which is always punny. Great soundtrack and a pixelated but nice looking art style. Now achievements wise, it's pretty much all or nothing. It's either story progression achievements or achievements, or sorry, and achievements related to getting all eight World Ball cards, and that's pretty much it. But there's no chapter select or anything like that, so you will have to be just a tad wary about when we are going to grab those World Ball cards. But of course, you've got lots of lots of manual saves you can do just to be on the safe side. So all in all, we're looking at around one hour fifteen ish to complete this. So with that being said, then. Well, let us begin. So, it doesn't matter if you pick the extra clues or not, it makes near not but a lick of difference. You can press and hold the A button here to skip cutscenes, which is what we'll be doing. Now, this game has a lot of dialogue in it. Very interesting, so it's always worth uh, having a look around, have a look at the story. But, just for the purpose of this being a just achievement guide, we're going to spam the A button continuously to get through a lot of the dialogue, um, which kind of takes it down from about three hours yeah you can do this game in if you were looking at all the dialogue you can do this game in roughly about three hours ish um, but again since we're not doing that we're going to do it quick so after we get smashed through the dialogue as i said there's a lot interact with the doors to go into the house that's a great start as we unlock the first achievement as well after the dialogue go up the stairs yeah, if you can manage that without falling over, drunk again. <laughs> Just joking, waffles. Go in the door. Question mark, question mark, question mark, door. And we got a couple of things to pick up the cup. First, have a look at that. Semi-pro. <laughs> Didn't even make it full pro. Uh, get the painting, or interact with the painting. And then interact with the book behind it in the safe. Who's hiding a book of literature? Oh, wait, that's, that's, that's lots of pictures. That's, uh, anyway, interact with the skateboard. And get the item of ball tape. Tape ball. Ball. Um, go outside and go to the left door, the three question marks. Until we get into the bathroom. Who stinks in here. Pick up the woman's perfume there from the middle. Give that a bit of a spritz. And then interact with the tile on the right hand side to grab the book hidden beneath it. Oh, come on, man. I'm going to spew my guts up. Let, let's get out of here, bruh. Come on. Nothing else to grab apart from those two, so let's get out and leave whoever done that to themselves. Right, we're going to go back down the stairs now, and we are going to go outside. So again, go to the left, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Interact with Fluffy's body, that's an unfortunate death. We're going to get a Polaroid picture. Now we can interact with the bin, or the trash can, in American time, to get another item there. And then from here, what we can do is go back into the house. So, head all the way back up them stairs again. God damn, this is a lot of work. Now we can go into inventory by clicking on the bag. Grab the broken screwdriver by pressing the A button and put it with the skate wheel. And that should open up, uh, well that should give you a, um, well this thing, the handle, yeah. So press the A button once, drag it over to the door, and now we can turn the door. I mean, you could literally just bash through it if you really wanted, but never mind. So, every rich guy has his own library. Yes, that's because they're all douchebags, all these rich people. Uh, just like a gammon Tory. Anyway, go into your inventory, grab the red book, and put it on the red book case underneath. Do the same with the blue book, so go into your inventory, grab the blue book, and put it on the right-hand side, close to where Big Waffle Bag is. And now we can go into the secret trap door. <laughs> Okay, it's not that secret, but anyway, there's a hair just by the computer right here on this piece of plant pot or something, so make sure to grab the hair. You can interact with the grass as well, but, uh, you know, it doesn't make a lick of difference. Interact with the drawers on the computers, and we're going to get a insult letter. That's going to come in handy a lot. 
Uh, interact with the board just above the computer as well. That uh, gets us a grocery list. We'll take that just because. Maybe we're hungry. We'll get some catnip. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, head back down to the bathroom. Oh, God, it's eating here too. Jesus Christ, let's get out of here. And somebody left some poop stains on the radiator. Right, I, yeah, Fluffy wasn't good at cleaning, huh? So we're heading back outside, all the way back outside. Interact with the window. Uh, just to basically give us a little bit of a clue there. And now we can speak with Patches. So, obviously what we're going to do is ask Top Floor. We're not going to say hi, we're going to say Top Floor. And then we can say... Um, secret office in Fluffy's house. Ew. How very quaint. Something salty. We will choose next. Officer Patches reporting for something salty. So this time we're going to ask him a question. Just go down and click on the grocery list there. And we're just talking about groceries. You want you you want a ducky? You want some dog food, bro? Nah, I can get you some goddamn dog food. Anyway, when we come into the next area by the uh, this is Fluffy's house. Yeah, by the Maple Center right here. Yep. What we're gonna do? We are going to interact with the chimney. So uh, it, basically, anything in yellow that basically acts as a clue as to what to do next. If you're wondering, after the chimney, speak to Millie, the uh, lady cat thing by the door, and have a good. Good old chat with old mill dogs. And we're going to say a neighbor. Which of course is the only one. When the question comes up, we're going to interact with the love letter in our inventory. Uh -huh. Fluff dog. And then choose a fluffy admirer. So fluffy being a CEO, cheats on his wife all the time. Yeah, just like every CEO basically. Choose a lady's perfume there at the top. So, uh, Millie's all like, <laughs> no, it wasn't me underneath his desk. I swear. Choose Warm Night, of course. That's the only option. Then choose Chimney Smoke. Smoke. Chimney Smoke, even. Now choose Fluffy's Killer. Now we're going to choose the hair from the inventory. So a piece of pubic hair, uh, just regular hair from the old bag. And now choose Fluffy's enemies. Of course, bro, he's the CEO. Everyone wants his money. Now choose insult letter. And that's the end of that chapter. Now is going to be a couple of dialogue scenes. So skippity skip skip bash bash bash. So yeah, I told you that was literally the end of that chapter. Max Power, he's the cat you'd love to touch. So smash the dialogue. Now what we're going to be doing, this is where we're going to start grabbing some of the wool ball cards, the collectibles, which are highly miserable. So go to your settings in the bottom right hand corner, choose save game, choose any option you want. Again, you get five options to save and then just click the settings book again to get off that and come back. What we're going to do is interact with the draw. And that's going to get us some milk. That was milk right there. It didn't look like lighter fluid, but there we go. Uh, now we can just go through the dialogue and go back into the hall. We are at the police eye station. Now we're going to go into Patch's office. Hello, Officer Snug Snug. And we will, as you've just seen, get a croissant for our troubles. Nice, we'll just stick that wherever the uh, wherever our pockets are. So we're heading left, back out into the hallway, into Pixel's office on the left. And there he is, big Pixel dog. We're all pixeled. Oh my god, I thought I was just blind. Right, so speak to Pixel and choose any clues. And we're going to be doing this a few times. First of all, we're going to give him the Polaroid. On Fluffy's body. Uh, 
And then of course we're going to choose any clues, question mark, dot, 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 Aruga. And then we're going to go ahead and give him the hair. Could you just tell me if it's off his head or if it's, if it's off his balls? I I touched him with my bare hands. Anyway, uh, choose any clues again. Sorry. Uh, choose any clues again. Now we're going to choose the insult letter. So make sure to grab that one. You put your balls in my mouth when I was sleeping. I hate you. That's pretty insultive, right? Man, this, this Fluffy had a great old time. Anyway, once that is all done, we can go to the right back out. Right again into the hall. And then we can go downstairs. I'll tell you what, that's what Fluffy used to do at uh, parties. No wonder he got shot. <laughs> Just joking. Right, speak with Mocha Mocha, who is in the Dory Dory. Uh, basically, we need to gain her trust, which is weird. But, I mean, maybe we broke her heart. Who knows? Anyway, uh, speak to her... Then choose the croissant, and she's going to be like, oh no, I'm just, you know, like all the posh people, oh no, I just do avocado on toast, please, I just, uh, no, don't do regular old common people junk. <laughs> anyway, bottom right hand corner there to get out of the dialogue, and then exit, so we'll be back for you, Mocha Mocha, later on. After this bit of dialogue happens, as I said, there is a lot that goes on in the game. Eventually, we are going to make like a cat and leave. Well, that made no sense, but you know what I mean. Exit anyway to the left. Then what we're going to do is interact with the coffee machine. That gets us a beautifully disgusting coffee, which sounds about right for every vending machine coffee ever. Go into your inventory, use the disgusting coffee, again by pressing the A button, and use it with the love letter. Uh, apparently that, that works on TV shows, so why not in games in real life, huh? Right, next go to the exit all the way to the left. Da she blows. And we've got little Howard. God, he looks awfully familiar. What was that one game off, uh, off Game Pass? Backbone? This get, gotta be it, gotta be it. Hello, Howard. Right, anyway, more dialogue, more dialogue, more dialogue. Anyway, we're into a new area, and it's one that we can buy a hot dog from. That's cannibalism. Still, uh, choose hot dog menus. A dog is serving up dog wieners. That's uh, that's pretty cannibalistic in this day and age. Then choose Irwin. <laughs> Don't know what to make of that. Uh, so we can get a new clue. And then choose... Uh, in fact, we're just going to exit this conversation for now. So, uh, bottom right-hand corner there. Get out of it, and then we can go into the building hall right next to us. Right next to where the uh, guy is selling his own wiener. Ch uh, speak to Duke. Duke Nukem. Then choose Erwin's best friend. Next up, choose Erwin has a limp. Succulent, <laughs> succulent Chinese meal. He's grabbing my limp penis. And then choose Erwin's best friend again. Sorry, th th that's... Uh, well, if you know, you know. Then choose Irwin as a black cat. Then we're going to do a whole lot of exiting. So get out of the conversation here. Now we're going to grab the umbrella, which is on the left-hand side of the lockers. So make sure to pick that umbrella up. Then, as soon as the dialogue is done, we're going to speak to Officer Spotty right next to us. And then we're going to head to the right. So we are going to speak to Bella. Can't you hear me, Bella? You're putting me through hell. Say, Erwin. Bella! Again, Simpsons related. If you know, you know. Um, right, choose Erwin Disappearance. Even though, of course, the Simpsons' name is Stella. Whatever. Choose Erwin has been away for four days. And now choose the unknown cat. Meow. 
Now choose Erwin has a limp. <laughs> a limp what? Now choose a little help with his limp biscuit. Oh, we've all got limp biscuits. Now choose the coffee stain letter. So thank you for that. Now we're going to go right once more. And we're going, this is where Irwin's uh, house is. Basically, Irwin's room. So, nice new clue for us. Right, if you want to see the funny shit you'll ever see, pick up the pickle and pickle rack. Pickle rack, the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Now pick up the uh, doormat, which is, of course, right in front of the door. Pickle rack, funniest shit i ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Right, we'll take that. We're going to give that back to Erdog later on. The Erwin. Now we're going back to the left. And we're going to go downstairs. So go to the left again. And now we can speak to Dukem Nukem again. And then what we can do is choose Erwin's best friend and then give him the World Ball Collectible Card Album. So this is where we are going to start grabbing all of the collectible cards. What he does is give us Erwin's key in return. Nice, if, it, if apparently it's that easy to get someone's house keys. So grab Erwin's key, use it with a disgusting coffee. That's basically going to melt the key and make it nice and clean. Damn, what's the stuff doing to your insides? Right, grab Erwin's key again, top left hand corner, the mailbox. Grab that one, grab the parcel. Now go back into your inventory and then press and hold the A button or X if you're on PlayStation to open up the small package. So again, you've got to press and hold it to get this bit of dialogue going. That gets us the first out of eight World Ball, ca World Ball cards and that is job done. So you can have a look um, actually in the collectible um, card album again by pressing and holding the A button if you want. Uh, but that's the only time we do it. So that's just in case you want to know how to do that. Otherwise, we're going to head back to the right and go upstairs. So again, you should have that first World Ball collectible card by now. Now we are going to go back to the right again. There it is. Got there in the end. And we are going to go into your inventory, grab Irwin's keys and use it with Irwin's apartment, of course. And get your buns in there, but don't be surprised if you see some weird stuff. People are into some weird stuff, especially those furry, furry bags. <laughs> right. Luckily, there's nothing too weird going on here. So, what we're going to do then after the dialogue, grab the almonds from the cupboard for the uh, Poshy's Almonds Croissant. <laughs> then, grab your inventory, use the almonds there with the croissant. <laughs> yes, yes, just like a Tory. <laughs> Can't do anything the commoners do. Right, we're going to exit anyway. <laughs> and then we are going to go back to the left towards Bella's apartment. Stella! Now, go downstairs. And then we can go back into the street. We will come back into Irwin's apartment in just a touch. Now we're going to speak to Frank and Weenie Bag again. Choose visitors. And next, what we're going to choose is the forgotten umbrella. So we're going to choose Cinnamon. Hey, was that Cinnamon as a hot dog? My buddy Cinnamon, he's dead. He's in a hot dog, but he tastes delicious. Uh, anyway, after the dialogue, of course, choose secret ingredient. We all know what the secret ingredient of hot dogs are. Dog wiener. Choose pickle. I, I mean, it's just pickle. Sorry, it's just pickle rack. Pickle rack. So, after the pickle, we do get a cinnamon roll for our troubles, which is good. Now, we're going to head into the antique shop on the right. And there's going to be some nice little music in here. Do, 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 do. Cho uh, to have a little conversation with Margie Babs on the right. Choose Irwin. Um, art everywhere, you say? <laughs> oh yes, it costs a million pounds for this one smudge. Choose weird customer. <laughs> then choose business is business, homie. I need about tree fitty. <laughs> then what we're going to do is choose the fake old love letter, which is just next to the Polaroid. So the fake old love letter. Now choose a very New Yorker, some cinnamon coffee. Hey, you got some of that cinnamon coffee? Was that a good New York accident? A accident? Accent? Well, who knows? Choose cinnamon anyway. Hey, here's some cinnamon coffee. Eee. Yeah? <laughs> no, it's terrible. Choose cinnamon coffee again. 
And she's going to tell us no again? Well, Margaret, you can go and pfft, up your guts, mate. Give me coffee. So what we're going to do is give her the flask of milk. Well, goddamn fine, it's about time, Margaret, boo. Right, she gives us a coffee. Now we can go back to the left, into the street. We'll be seeing you later, Maggie Thatcher. Uh, nah. Oh, God, no. Anyway, we're heading back into the car. Where are we going? We're going back to the police station. Oh, no, 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 Margaret Thatcher. Oh, no, no. She, she, she is pretty much where she belongs. Evil woman. Right. We are going to speak to Peanut there, the officer behind the reception. Choose a favor. Peanut. Money can buy many peanuts. And he's going to give us a key anyway, the police key, which will come in handy once again. Now we can actually just exit the conversation, so we're going to do that. And then we're just going to go to the right, down to the stairs. Or up the stairs, whichever way you want to go. A bit more dialogue, of course. Now we're going to go to the right, to the stairs once more. And we're going to go up the stairs to the up the stairs once more. Okay, right, so from here, after this little uh, exchange and cutscene, again, press and hold the A button to get rid of the cutscene. Now, I'm no expert, but I think it was like that Crank 2 scene with Jason Statham where he had a shotgun at the guy's bum. Maybe that was the same uh, situation. Who knows? Anyway, we're going into Patch's office, the right door. Uh, Patch is, <laughs> uh, we're going to head into his office, grab the coupon from the left-hand side board. And then grab the croissants that are just chilling on a box on the chair right next to Officer Spotty. Yeah, right there. Croissant box. Come in. There's a prize looking donut on the right as well, which looks nice, but we ain't going to bother with that one. So we're going to exit to the left again. And then we're going to exit left of the hall. And then from here, we're going to go into the empty office, which is on the right hand side again, which is his old partner Pancake's office. Uh, unfortunately, he went as flat as a pancake, so, um, <laughs> which is why he's all got all PTSD and stuff. Right, interact with the pinned article. That is going to get us a new clue. The pinned article is right where the arrow is, by the way, of course. Just the sort of bottom right-hand uh, news clipping. And then we are pretty much all good with this bit. We can speak to Spotty, um, but... Uh, in fact, yeah, speak to Spotty, because it gives us a clue, of course. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself there, so... Two clues you should have had in that room. From here, we can go all the way back to the right in the hall. Eddie Hall. Now we're going to go downstairs. Eddie downstairs. And then we are just going to go all the way to the left to exit. Again, we'll be almost done with Mocha Mocha. Now we're going to exit again. And then this time we're going to speak to Peanut Balls again and choose Croissants Left. Yes. Now what we're going to do is give him the normal croissant. Don't, of course, give him the almond one. We need that. Peanut is not worthy of an almond croissant. So, give him the normal one. Go to the right of the stairs. And then we are going to go right again to the stairs. And this time with Mocha Mocha 2000. Choose Building Trust. And then give her the coffee and the almond croissant. Oh. Uh -huh. No, that's all you need to gain a woman's trust is give her an almond croissant and a cup of nice coffee. And then we can just exit the conversation. She's just basically given us a warrant, which is all we needed. And that's all it took was a lot of walking around and breaking into people's houses and stealing stuff. Bang, tidy look. Right, so we're going to exit uh, to the left a couple of times here until we're back outside. Then we're going to head to Irwin's building once more. And let's go back into the building hall, of course, because this is where we need to go. So, we're going to ignore Duke and go to the right upstairs. Then we're going to go right again to Irwin's apartment. No more Pickle Ricks. We've, of course, got rid of him. Go into Irwin's apartment. We have the warrant. Even though nobody was there, so we could have just done it anyway. A uh, bit more dialogue. And then after this is done, speak to Spotty Bobs again. Oh, 
Then we're about to make a good big discovery. Interact with the wall on the right to find the hiding place. And then choose anywhere to pick up the catnip. And of course, try not to uh, get any catnip inside you before we take it into evidence. But of course, if you need to pick me up, then, uh, you know, why not try a little bit of catnip? There's, there's nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Um, anyway, so... As soon as we've done that and we've grabbed that and that's in our inventory, we can go go into our inventory, Irwin's grocery list, and use it with the grocery list. Again, that does come in handy because they are very identical. So, after we grab those two and put the two grocery lists together, there we go. Now we can go back to the exit, or exit out through the door, and we're going to go all the way to the left, back to Bellerend's apartment, back to the downstairs. And then we're going back out to the street. Right, from here what we can do is just interact with the car there. It's on the bottom left hand corner, it's behind the, my Welsh Hunter sign, sorry. And now we're going to Maple Market. So, well, yeah, let's do it, mate. Right, Wilborn card number two coming up. Now you have to be very careful, so if you want, make a manual save here as well, just in case you mess up. It's not that hard to mess up, you've just got to pick one specific dialogue option before choosing the other one, otherwise the story progresses and you'll have to go through all this again. So, go into the shop. Hello, George. George Pig's grown up to be a dog. Speak with him and then choose groceries, but make sure that we choose the coupon option first. Very important, make sure to choose the coupon option, that will give us the rare World Ball card and gives us the free food achievement. So after we do this, then we can give him the grocery lists. If you give him the grocery list before the coupon, the story progresses and you'll have to reload your manual save, which is of course at the beginning of chapter 2. So that's why I said to make a manual save and try not to mess that up too much. Either way, that's the end of chapter 2 and now we can go on to... Well... Chapter 3! And when we are here, we are going to do the same thing again. We're going to make another manual save, just in case. There's not too many times you can mess up or anything like that. It's literally just in case you screw up on the World Ball cards and stuff like that. But I'll always tell you when we're about to grab another World Ball card to make another manual save anyway, if you wanted to. So, we're going right. Here is a door. It's a very nice door. So we're going to go right again, because we can't get through the door yet. Um, we're going to grab the item, the wool ball card. That's just a common wool ball card, so that's not an achievement, sadly. Pick up the magnet there from the bottom right-hand corner next to the bin bags. And then we can go back to the left, into the sewers, where all the alligators and poop live. Of course. Right, what we can do, after all the dialogue, go into your inventory. We can use the key, but the key's not going to work, so what we need to do is use the magnet and use it with the bottom of the door. The door, well, what do you call it? The door hole. So after that we get the sewer key, so we can use the sewer key on said door and said move said right said thread through. Right said thread through even. Right, go down the ladder. And what's down here? More alligators and poop, plus a costume. So, pop on the costume and enjoy the next cut scene. Cult scene, I should say. So now that bit of weird tree is over, we are, we are meeting a new character called Meatball. Kind of looks like a stuffy old meatball, which is nothing wrong with that, but we are going to speak to him. What's up, small balls, meatballs? We're going to interact with him using the costume um, di dialogue option there, then choose Irwin. Sorry, I made a meal of that one then, didn't I? Uh, choose Irwin to get us a couple of clues, then a favour. Right, and then he wants a lighter, so you can literally walk across the room, but we got to do it. So, exit the conversation, grab a light, which is just on the table, right, just to the right of the computer. 
and so we grab that one plus we also grab another item as well so uh, click on meatball choose a light and then in your inventory we are going to choose the lighter option there we go so after this bit there's nothing else to do except we can just um, exit uh, escape from the cult there the sort of middle of the door so let's go Ah, we finally made it then. So, head towards the exit there on the right. And then we've got a couple of things to do before we can get the hell out of this area. And the first thing we are going to do is grab the stick there from the left-hand side, just next to the big giant monkey hole. It's not a monkey hole, it's just a regular hole. So, uh, into your inventory, grab the stick and use it with the magnet to you to have a, well... Like a long stick magnet. Yeah, it's pretty much the only way we're doing that. Right, smash the dialogue there. Again, try not to interact with other stuff because you end up pressing the A button for ages then. But grab the stick magnet, use it with the magpie, and that gets us a delicious looking coin. It's, it's not that delicious, but one coin can buy many delicious snacks. Here we are then at a gas station, or a petrol station, or a ripping Britain off station, as I would like to call it these days. Interact with the phone booth. Go into your inventory, use the coin with the phone booth. So you don't actually have to interact with the phone booth first. You can just use the coin, which is fine. And there's only one place to go, and that's the old Maple Market. So, get back there. Well, wasn't that entertaining? Let's go back to the right of the stairs, is it? Sounds good to me. Right, the coffee machine looks like it's getting worse. So, um, well, we'll just leave old pixelated pixel head to that. So, to the right, and then to the up. There we go, let's go to the up, up and away, up and at them. Right, uh, Big Patches is fuming because we've stolen his chunky croissants. Speak to him anyway, and then choose Cat Towns Underground. And then what we can choose is Secret Cult in Cat Towns Underground. And obviously he's going to be like, no, I'm not part of that or anything. <laughs> uh, getting into Irwin's apartment, as apparently Patches sounds like Boris Johnson. And, 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 and Britain. Uh, next, we are going to go down and choose the warrant for Irwin's apartment. <laughs> Maple Market lead. And then we can choose uh, the grocery lists. You know, so this is all going well, all going smooth as is usual. Choose an oldest friend. And then what we're going to choose next is the uh, uh, meatballs as part of the secret cult. Meatballs. Now choose the missing cat. And after this, we're going to choose Irwin has been kidnapped. So, Irwin. Oh my god, man, he's been kidnapped, man. Stop eating, you fat son of a. I want it. Give me your donut. Right, so, apparently, this is the real Irwin, but of course, we don't believe him. Because he can just dress up any black cat in a suit and call him an Irwin. Right? Yeah, but we're going to speak to um, the real Irwin anyway. So, choose the real Irwin. Dennis Irwin, legend. Choose Irwin as a black cat. 
Then choose the real Erwin again. And next we're going to choose Erwin has a limp. Now choose the real Erwin again. <laughs> and then choose Erwin has been away for four days. Coming back home. Hmm, interesting. Now choose abandoned grocery bag. Oh, ho, ho, ho. something illegal going on here. Now we are going to choose uh, Irwin Gross Illegal Catnip. Which of course we all know we're catching him out. He's not the real Irwin. Um, Fluffy's death. You get out of my Irwin, you. And then after this one we are going to choose the insult letter. You're off the investigation! For good! Which is the Norman stuff like this, isn't it? Good detective, gets kicked off the case, and then, oh, it's all sad, and then he saves the day, and everyone's happy, and they say sorry. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Right, another wool ball card we'll be grabbing, so if you want to make a manual save, you could do that, just in case, because you never bloody know. Uh, but this one is a lot easier, and a lot less chance of messing up than George's was in Chapter 2. So, when the dialogue's done, uh, speak with Big Bob. All right, Bob. Yep, happy days. Right, so he wants a common. So when we choose card trading, what we're going to do is use the common uh, wool ball card, which is right there. So we should have picked that one up. Choose that one. And so for some reason, he's going to give us the rare wool ball card. And he's also going to give us an achievement as well. So cheers, Big Dog. Thank you for what could possibly go wrong. Uh, that's the first thing that's ever gone wrong. Uh, right, go exit. We don't need to speak to anyone else. We just got our uh, woolly ball ball cards and then BAM BAM! It's gunshot time, baby! Which, I mean, sadly in America is an all too common occurrence, and it really, really friggin' shouldn't be, did it? Guns, what's the point? What's the point? Huh? Maybe I'm just too British to understand, right? Why everyone needs a gun in America. Anyway, guns are stupid, the end. Right, interact with the dead cat. We wonder who this is. We'll find out in a minute. We are coming up to the end of chapter three, by the way, so when we head back to the right, we're going to interact with the bin on the right. Um, something nice for the dog in there, I assume? <laughs> Barkbuster, <laughs> that's funny. Ah, great pun, great pun. Right, uh, what you need to do, go into our inventory, use the piece of cloth that we just found from the bin, use it over the dead cat. Uh, and that's a one hell of a bullet hole, by the way. Jesus, on a Buddha, man. And away we go into chapter 4. So we've got this and we got chapter 5 left to do. This is, I think, the longest chapter in the game anyway. But when that's done, we get an access card from the pixelated pixel cat. Thank you very much for that. And we once again, we are going to make a manual save. Always as a just-in-case thing. Because we end up getting three or... Either three or four more wool ball cards on this level. So... Definitely make a couple of manual saves on this level. Right, from here what we're going to do, you can interact with your inventory. We've got a couple of things, which is nice. We're going to speak to Pixel. 
the laptop pixelated pixel man as uh, patches stuff as his fat chunky face choose the first option there which is the um, any clues and then choose the access card and for now what we can do is just head out of the conversation when we can because we've got a new clue so we're gonna get out of <laughs> get out of the street which is what we're gonna do go to the right right we're gonna speak to uh, chicken police that sounds like an awfully familiar game. You, you know, when it was original and they didn't change all the bloody achievement requirements for those that have played Chicken Police Painted Red. Right, speak to them and choose the tail application anyway, the only dialogue option that you can. So please, devs of this game, as we choose on the wrong paw, devs of this game, please don't change achievement requirements, okay? That'd be nice. Right, choose the popcorn anyway. And then after the popcorn, we need to choose the gumdrop buttons. So again, choose on the wrong paw here, and then choose not the gumdrop buttons, but yeah, choose the gumdrops. Now that we've fed the fat bar stools, what we're going to do is help with the investigation. Didn't realize that was just a giraffe and a soup. Then choose hippo elephant. That is a big giraffe with a big suit. Man, his tailor must be loaded. Help with the investigation again. And then choose Wool Ball MVP. So after that, we exit out of the conversation and we're going to go to the left. We're going to speak to Pixel again and choose Anti-Feline Protection. And then we're going to choose Dogs Don't Care About Wool Ball when they do. Dogs love balls, whether they're blue, chewy or natting. Dogs love a ball. And that gives us a new clue, and a couple of new clues actually. Now we are going to choose the help option. In fact, no, we're just going to exit. Sorry, again, just getting a bit ahead of myself. We're going to choose the, we're going to exit. We're going to look at the sewer pipe on the floor just below the posters. Then uh, speak with Pixel again. Now choose help. Sorry, so I did get a little bit ahead of myself. Then choose the great blocks uh, are blocked. The great blocks to the entrance. <laughs> Sorry. He gives us a screwdriver, so you know where this is going. Get the screwdriver and stick it in the journalist's eye, especially if he works for the sun. I, I mean, use it on the sewer pipe, of course. <laughs> no, of course I don't uh, condone violence of any type, so please, if you see a sun journalist, don't stick a screwdriver in his eye. Thank you. Now we're going to speak to Lumo anyway, which is the journalist. A couple of questions going to be happening here, uh, of course. So, small talk first, please. Now we're going to choose Can't Enter the Sewer Pipe, which is just riveting, huh, for the newspaper. Now choose Help Isn't Free. Now choose uh, Marmalade, Victim's Name, not, um, the sa <laughs> not the jam. <laughs> and when that one is said and done, we're all done. Ow, oh, he gives us a Polaroid. Looked like Donald Trump there as a frog or something, to be honest. Tidy. Right, uh, go into your inventory, grab the uh, Donald Trump Polaroid, use it on the campaign posters behind fat patches. And apparently we're going on a pretty good catnip trip right now. Speaking of the platypus. Why not? Whatever gets you through the night, bud. So, after we sort of wake up and stop talking to hallucinogenic uh, platypuses, what we're going to do is head to the left. We're going to exit. Nothing in our office except catnip, vodka, and shame and depression. Um, <laughs> and failure, I should have said there, actually. Sorry. Go left into the hall and then again into Pixel's office. And then what we're going to do is, there's a whole beep in, and that's the DNA machine right in front of us. So choose that. And we've got a couple of results. <gasps> oh my god, who's the result? Snowball. Who's Snowball? Oh, wait, you know, the guy who um, shoved a shotgun up your partner's 
the <laughs> behind and all that stuff from the cutscene earlier. So when that's done anyway, we're going to be all shocked and surprised and we're going to go back to the right into the hall. Speak to Officer Spotbogs. So from here, just head to the hall and then go all the way down the stairs and have a good little conversation with Big Peanut before heading out. So, when it all is said is done, we're going to go to the prison this time. Ooh, now it's getting really hefty. Right, a couple of things we're going to do in this little area first, and we're going to grab the coin, which is just in front of Officer Receptionist. It's a hell of a name, but make sure to grab that coin first. It's a fake coin, but that's fine, we'll keep it anyway. Look more like a dinosaur than a dog, but that'll do. <laughs> it's all entertaining. Right, so what we need to do, we can't just go straight in, so we have to uh, go into our inventory, use the coin with the piece of cloth, and then that gives us a clean. Oh, now it looks like a dog, not a dinosaur. Uh, now speak with Lenny himself, Mr. Officer. Please don't tell anyone how I live. Then, of course, choose approval. Waffles. Right, now choose Snowball's DNA Confirmation. Which, of course, we just got from the DNA Confirmation Machine, just in case you were wondering. So, now we should be good to go. Let's go to the right into the jail cell. Now, obviously, this is a detective question thing. You don't have to speak to Officer Pretty. We'll come back later for your number. Uh, before you kick my ass for asking for your number. Which actually, just in the cat's world, probably would be the same in my world as well, so <laughs> it makes no difference. Anyway, into the jail cell, conversation again. Now we're going to speak to Snowball the Third. Because Lisa Simpson keeps killing off all her Snowball cats. So have a chat with him. Um, and then choose the night before last. Of course, this is going to go on for quite some time, good couple of minutes. Now choose Snowball's DNA confirmation. Oh my god. Now choose Fluffy's house. Fluffy balls, fluffy nuts. Who wants these nuts and them fluffy nuts? Fake cult. Partners in crime. Next set of questions. Choose meatballs is part of the secret cult. Then choose a question from Snowball. Why did you kill me, Lisa? Then choose Precious Memories. Next, choose more than one way to skin a cat. And that's the end of that interview. So when we're done here, we don't have to speed snowball. We can just exit to the left, get out of here. And then when we are out of here, conversation, conversation, and then we can go to the left to get out of here again. Meanwhile, back at the Dreamers Hotel, choose life in danger. Choose life in danger, and then choose the Polaroid, the old Donald Trump. Ah, oh, there he is himself. Old orange face, orange hair, Trumpy boy. Uh, now choose, and now, question mark. Now choose a snack, question mark. Well, he's not interested in anything except eating, so give him the lollipop.
Right then, let's head into the break room. After we uh, intervene and after we uh, can take control of our character, we're going to go into the break room. So, head in. A couple of things we're going to grab here. We're going to speak with... Well, we're going to speak with no one, as it turns out, because what we're going to do first is go into our inventory. We're going to grab the Dogue coin, use it on the vending machine, and... Ah, uh, nothing. Oh, in fact, yes, we get some yummy kibble. Delicious. Now, speak to Smokey, who's on the right. Choose the rest home stealer. And then, when the dialogue options come up again, we're going to choose the thief's name. And now, we can choose the insult letter. Right, make sure to grab the plastic fish, which is on the table right in front of Smokey Doki right there. So make sure to grab that plastic fish. Shame it's not real. I'm hungry about now. So after this dialogue's done, we're going to go to the right to go further on. And there we see our shotgun in the butt, buddy. Uh, pancakes. Well, that shotgun really must have taken a toll on him because now he's in a wheelchair. God damn. So, pancake went as flat as a pancake. That's why he's there. So speak to him. And then we're going to choose Snowball's DNA Confirmation. Next, we're going to choose Snowball and his past. Well, he's a douchebag. That's pretty much it. Choose more than one way to skin a cat. Now choose who is he. And then after the uh, this bit of conversation is done with the next one, we are going to choose... Well, we're going to have a new clue. We're just going to choose Mallow then. Nice. Next up, we're going to choose a sweet smell in the empty office. The second dialogue option. And that's all there is to it in this area then. So we're going to... Was that... Was that dog zero years old? Oh, no, bingo. <laughs> right, that makes sense. Right, we're going to the left, back into the car, all the way to the outside into the car. Where are we going, Inspector? Well, we're going to head back to Fluffy's house. So, we're going to start picking up some more of those wool balls in just a minute. So, what we have to do, this bit of conversation is going to happen with Rex and Rox, the dog duos. And then we're going to head back into the car. So, after the conversation's done, just go back into the car. And then this time, where are we going, Inspector? Are we going to the police station? We need that extra warrant, boy. So from here, go to the stairs on the right. And then to the right again. Seems like the coffee machine is done and dusted. Well, if you sell acid, that's what happens. Right. Knock on the door to choose the mocker. Uh, give her the conversation. And then choose Millie's house is under surveillance. And then what's going to happen is... She gives us the extra warrant, so that's job done. So now we can go back out to the car and then go back to Fluffbag's house. Fluffy's house, of course. Yeah. So speak to Rex Rocks, the old tiny car, give him the warrant. And then give him the warrant from Millie's house. There we go, so now we can head in. So, that's what we're going to do. Head into Millie Fluffy's house. Right, so, a couple of things we're going to do here, and then we're going to come back. So, first things first, interact with the mail, obviously from the door. Where's Millie gone? Interesting. That gives us a new clue. So, then what we can do is get rid of all the dialogue there. Happy days. Interact to the left with the chimney. A couple of love letters popping out there, just secretly. Right, next we're going to grab the Morse code book. So make sure to grab that big blue book that we just got where the arrow is now. And then from here, we can just exit for the time being. But we're going to come back to the house in just a bit to grab another woolly ball card. So, back into the car. And then where we're going to go is Irwin's building once more. Then when we head to Irwin's building, let's go back into the building hall. And then we're going to go to the right as soon as we just get rid of all our Duke of Nukem's dialogue there. So, to the right. To the right now, y'all. One hop this time. Boop. 
And on the table, we're going to see a small key, which comes in handy. So pick up the key, which is coming handy. Now we can interact with Bella's apartment to go left. And then go left again to, to go to the down to the stairs. Now, before leaving, what we're going to do is grab that small key from our inventory and use it on the top right-hand corner of someone's mailbox. That gives us the next World Ball card. Um, it does say the sixth one, so we're doing it. We're not doing it in an order. We're just doing it sort of as as we go along, as the quickest we can find. So make sure to grab that. Then go out and into the antiques shop. And this time we're going to speak to Big Lucius. Yes, I only like Twining's tea. <laughs> anyway, choose is someone here. Now choose the plastic fish. So after that conversation then, we're going to choose the dialogue option, Dictator Pig Book. Nice. <laughs> that is a book written specifically for Boris Johnson, I reckon. Dictator Pig Book. So that gives us a little note as a clue and a, a, a something for our inventory. So we're going to go back out into the street and then we're going to go back into the car. And where are we going, Inspector? Well, I'm going to tell you. We are off to Fluffy's house once again. So it's the big Flefter Bag's house. Go back into the house. Of course. So we're going to get the next wool ball card. So again, if you want to make a manual save, you know, be my guest, do it. Get Lucius's note, put it on the classical books, and that's going to pop out a rare wool ball card for us, plus the creature farm achievement. So that's done. Now we can head back to the outside. And now we're going to go back into the car. See, we are getting there. We've got roughly about 20 minutes left now of gameplay. Go back to the police station. We're going to be grabbing yet another world ball, world ball card. So, go to the stairs. Go to the right again to the stairs. And then go up the stairs. And a lot of walking. <laughs> Too much walking, this one. Right, go to, uh, to the left into the hall. And then what we're going to do is go all the way to the left into Pixelated Pixel Head's office. Not the interrogation room, all the way left there. Right, now what we need to do is go into our inventory, get the Morse code book out, and then use it with the big whiteboard behind, uh, well, right where our cat Waffle's head is. After that, we should now have a number on it, so go back into your inventory, use the Morse code on the drawer with the DNA machine is on, and that gets us the next World Ball card. So, job's good and now we're going to head back to the right. And then we're going to go into the empty office once more. So in here, this time what we're going to do is grab the small piece of paper, which was hanging right there, right where the arrow is right now, uh, to the sort of bottom left of the clues, if you want to call it that. But we're going to grab that packet, and we're going to get the hell out of Dodge. From here, we're going to go obviously to the right, down to the hall, and then down the old wooden pears, the old apples and pears again. Oh, British slang. It's very funny. Now we're going to the exit. And the exit once again. Man, why can't there just be an elevator on this thing? And the exit once again. It's too big a police station. That's why I don't like working here. Anyway, we go into the candy shop. Don't forget to take your bra off after a hard day. Right, from here we are going to grab another wool ball card. So before going through the door, go into your inventory. Get your kibbles. And then use it, it should be, it should say wool ball card right there, just sort of underneath the smashed window. That is going to get us the rare um, wool ball card. And then I think we, yes, we do. We've only have got one left to grab, which we need to grab all eight for a secret ending, by the way. So that's why it is important, even more important to grab all eight of those. So from here, we can grab the key and use it on the candy shop. Then you're just going to go back into your inventory and click on the key again for some particular reason. So that bit confused me generally. So you go back into your inventory, click on the key, and then it seems to work. So, well, that's job done. Now we can get inside and see 50 Cent chilling with his lollipop looking girlfriend there or something. Well, whatever, the, whatever the lyrics go. Anyway, go to the left into the cotton candy shop. And then we are going to see someone who isn't 50 cent, but is still not 50 cent in the slightest. So 
So then, after the bit of conversation, what we're going to do is ring the bell and also interact with the table behind Pavlov. So it's about as least as 50 cents as you can get. So, ring the bell. Now what you can do is, like I said, interact with the table behind Pavlov. Um, I forgot to do it yet, but that's fine. I'll obviously do it in just a second. So, from this dialogue, we are obviously go, just going to pick the first one, which is fight end, ended abruptly. And then what we can choose is Pavlov stopped when the bell rang. Which is fine. And also what we need, when we interact with the table, we'll get a clue that says... Pavlov is incredibly strong, something like that. So after this bit, uh, we're just going to exit out of the conversation if you didn't interact with the table. If you did, good. If you didn't, interact with it now. And then we can speak to 50 Pavlov once more. Current investigations. Two Moiders. Now choose Pavlov is incredibly strong. Right, back in this area then, we're going to speak to Officer Spotty once more. Who's obviously got a great nose for detail. And then we're going to go to the secret trap door, just underneath the plant pot right there. So open up the trap door, and then head inside. Let's see what we got. Anybody? Nope, it's just a lot of what looks very dodgy, but it is just sugar. So I'm just accidentally spamming the A button there. He doesn't actually speak that much. Uh, but go into your inventory when you can anyway. Get the Polaroid copy and use it on the poster. So that's, uh, well, that's going well, isn't it? After this bit of dialogue, what we're going to do next is then grab the blueprint. The big, big blue print, which is why they call it a blueprint. And then use, uh, interact with the bed there on the left hand side. So you get the blueprint in your inventory, the Polaroid on the poster, and interact with the bed as well. So you should have two clues there. Right, back to the left. We're going to speak to Pavlova. Now we're going to choose the bottom option, which is someone lives hidden in the shop. Next, we're going to choose something planned. And then when this conversation's done, we're going to give him the blueprint. Ooh, spooky stuff. So give him the blueprint. And then choose a flash of light, Mr. Giant Confused Dog. Now we are going to choose the Polaroid was a fake option. Right, so back here we're going to speak the patches and choose the fluffy case suspect. So uh, again, a little bit of dialogue, a lot of bit of dialogue is going to happen. From here we are going to choose the uh, Pav uh, Pavlov is incredibly strong option. So we'll smash, 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 and then we're going to choose unbelievable clue. And that unbelievable clue is DNA's uh, snowball's DNA confirmation. <laughs> DNA snowball confirmation. Dead, yeah, it's on the same ballpark, but there we go. So snowball's DNA conversation there. More dialogue, a lot more dialogue. Patches Polaroid. P -p -p Patches Polaroid. Next, we're going to choose a Pavlov. A Polaroid was a fake. Sorry, not Pavlov was a fake. He was very much real. So after the last dialogue option, then we're going to now give him the blueprint. So make sure to give him the blueprint.
Dun, dun, dun. Right, so now we're on to the final chapter. Maple versus cookie. Depends what you want. Personally, I like I like maple. The uh, No, I like cookie. No, wait, they're all pretty much going to screw the country over because that's what all politicians do, isn't it? Yes, we are there for you. No, we just want to bend you over and take away everything you've got. So, well, that's politicians in a nutshell for you, isn't it, really? Uh, right, so when we're done here, again, we're just going to make one last save. This uh, last chapter, by the way, is only about 10 minutes long, which is always nice. So, again, make a manual save if you so wish. But from here, we're going to head out into the hallway. And then we're just going to head downstairs. No reason to go into any offices. There's going to be a lot more dialogue in uh, this final short chapter, which is nice. So we've got the screwdriver as well. Again, coming in handy. Now, this part is actually one of my most favorite parts in the whole game because it's just so unexpected. So, go into your settings, choose the help option, and then choose the call mom option. Now, you can actually do this if you're stuck at, at any point through the game, but you have to do it here. So, what Waffles does is call his mother, who calls Meatball's mother, who comes down, tells him off, and gets him out of the way. I don't know why, that just creased me a lot. That, that was very well done. Because if there's one person that you never ever mess with, it is your mother. Because no matter who you are and how big you are, she will kick your ass. So, go into your inventory, get the flask of milk and use it with the glass. Um, so, we've got some more milk, which is tidy. So, my mother kicks my ass and, well, I'm proud of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, anyway, couple of things to do, including grabbing the last World Ball card. We're going upstairs, or we're going to attempt to go upstairs. And there we are. Jeez, now Pepper. Pepper Pig is growing up as well. Pepper and George. Well, well they, they went into more serious roles than I thought they were going to do. Right then, head to the right to the outside right. And then a couple of small things to do here. There's a laser on top, which we are going to stifle in just a mo. So, when we can regain control of our waffle bags, what we're going to do is go into our inventory. We're going to grab the jamming device and use it on the laser. So, make sure to use it on the laser and not the hatch. So, that one is done. And then from here, what we can do is go back into our inventory again. We're going to use the, the screwdriver with the jamming device. So, use the screwdriver there with the jamming device. We've got no idea what's going on, but... Well, it's got us some free electrical cables anyway. So, make sure to grab the key right where Waffles is standing right there. Oh, in fact, actually use the magnet on it, which makes sense. So, use the magnet on it. And then we can pick up that key. So, once that is done, we can go back to the inside and then head to the left. So from here, into your inventory, use the cabinet key with the medicine cabinet directly in front of us, right in the middle of the screen. And then we're going to grab the bandage, a couple of bandages, and a syringe as well. Now, I wonder why we're going to do that. Who's jacking up with catnip? Hmm? Hmm? Anyway, go into your inventory again, use the syringe, and use it with the flask of milk. Ah, okay, that's better. That makes sense. So we've got uh, milk with a syringe. Okay. Right, into the janitor's closet we go. Go into your inventory, grab the electrical wires, and then use it with the electrical sparks. Somehow, the the police detective, non-electrical person, has just smashed that up, no problems, and for free. 
which is not like electricians usually, is it? Anyway, grab the broken broom from between the shelf and the barrel, go into your inventory there, and use the bandages with the broken broom. Just joking, electricians, you know. Not jealous that you're richer than me or anything. Then go back into your inventory, grab the broken broom with a bandage, use that with a screwdriver, which makes an extra long brush bandage on a broom. Next, we are going to use that bandage on a broom with a screwdriver, use it on the wool ball card right at the very, very top, and that should be the final one that we're going to grab. So, too bad I'm not a Gyraffe. Yes, that is the eighth wool ball card. Now, what that's going to do is actually enable us to view the secret ending at the very end of the game. As we just go outside again to the right. So if you don't collect all eight, but wool, eight wool ball cards, you won't get the secret ending or the secret ending achievement. So please keep that one in mind. Of course, you should have your manual saves to go. Anyway, use the long screwdriver handle with the hatch. Again, not with the laser, but use that with the hatch. And then we can go back into our inventory. And then we're going to use the milk and syringe and use that with the laser. Or the hatch, sorry. No, hatch. Hatch. Hatch it up. God damn you, Peppa Pig. First when you were a child pig and now as you're an adult leopard. You're a douche. So, let's speak to Snowball. It is the actual Snowball. Choose the first guinea pig. So basically, it was Snowball's brother in prison. So, yeah. Now choose Mallow, Snowball's brother. Yeah, that's what happens when two brothers look alike. You can <laughs> you can use the other one. Use the wienerish brother to do thy bidding. Choose someone lives hidden in the shop. Do thy bidding, weaker younger brother. Now choose, of course, plans of weakness. And next, we are going to choose the more than one way to skin a cat option. Next, we are going to choose um, Pavlov is incredibly strong. Then the only other dialogue option, of course, which will be false leads. And then we can choose Polaroid was a fake. So choose false leads again. Whoops. And now we're going to choose a secret cult in Cat Towns Underground. Next, choose meeting snowballs in prison. Nice ball, snowballs. And then from here, we're going to choose snowball DNA confirmation. Right, now choose finding the safe house. And now we can choose a sweet smell in the empty office. And that's the end of that chapter. So, basically, to summarize, uh, because we sabotaged the laser, that knocked out Snowball and uh, Pepper Pig, or Pepper Leopard now, and then they go into prison, or they die, whichever way you want to look at it. Either way, a lot of dialogue options going to happen here. Go to the left, a lot of dialogue options going to happen here. And it's basically the end of the game. Hooray! my happy buddy right now this will be the, uh, again you can just press and hold the a button there to skip the credits if you so wish but if you got all eight world ball cards you will now see this scene so if you didn't collect them all all you're gonna see is the continue audio game option so again as long as you got all eight of the world ball cards
cards, you will come to this area and get these secret ending achievements as well. So, as we head downstairs, we need to do is go to inventory, get the wood key that we've just given and use it to bust up the statue. That opens up a secret door on the right hand side, so we go there. And then all we got to do, well, I mean, that's the end of the conversation now, but uh, that's basically the end. subscribe to the share and share with a friend is what i'm trying to say as we get over 15 out of 15 achievements um don't forget to check me on my socials as well twitter instagram facebook patreon